So again, once we get to next week, it's all in the book. So that's volume six. That other five, that's volume five, the one I saw floating around out there in volume five. That is, you should have that unless 24 bucks is just something that's you know, egregious. But you should have volume five um, because there's no reason not to. But volume six is what we'll be focusing on. Um, did you say in volume six, what are the number of 62 through 71. Because on our volume five, it says 62 through 71. 72 through 81. <laughs> I was trying to avoid oh. my future years. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, no. <laughs> so 72 through 81, okay. you see? I didn't know what I didn't know while I'm over here. Right? I didn't know what I didn't know. It's really a gorgeous yeah. thing. Because when you become aware of how you reason, you know, so long as you're not just a blockhead. Blockheads don't make good lawyers. You know, as long as you're not a blockhead and you get, oh gosh, I didn't know that. And you learn. Uh, so yes, I popped it. Oh. 72 through 81 okay. is volume six. Uh, all right, next thing I want to do, so I just want to establish that as we, as we work in logical reasoning, right, you're going to start to become aware of this. You're going to start to become aware that not all, not all these problems are created equal. In a psychometric test, it's intentional that I'm going to sit down with a bunch of other people at the LSAC, right? It's going to be like a team of people, probably kind of like me, and we're going to come up with problems that are, I'm going to say, well, I, I want this problem to be solved by somebody who's going to go to Pace Law School, right? But I may come up with a different problem, and I'm saying, but I don't want this to be solved by somebody going to Pace Law School. I want this to be solved by somebody going to Yale. Do you get that means we have to do more work? Talk to me. Get what's going on. You're bringing a knife to a gun club. Right. I mean, it really is that simple. How much time do the writers have to write? Yeah, as long as they need, right? How much time do you have to read? 35 minutes, right? And then you divide that, again, according to this plan, by yeah, what am I trying to achieve? Um, and, and so one of the skills we're going to try to develop is can you, I mean, how helpful would it be if they, next to the uh, question, they put the level of difficulty? It'd be, you know, it'd be wonderful, right? But I'm saying you don't need that because it's right here. That if I want it to be a level one, this has to flow because a representative law school student needs to be able to get it right. Remember, if I'm trying to get a median of 60 out of 100, doesn't that mean there have to be 60 questions on the test that are approachable? Mm -hmm. the, you know, so again, I'm going from here to here. Like, what, what is the inference I draw? Well, the fact is the median is 58, right? The inference I draw from that fact is that it's evenly distributed, right? So take that now. So what, what does evenly distributed mean? Well, it means, like you guys get the LSAT is, the predictive validity of the LSAT is very, very, it's way higher than the GPA. And this is this all empirical, right? In other words, <clears throat> the way the process works is, when you apply to law school, do you get the law school has your undergraduate GPA and your LSAT score? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the Law School Admissions Council uh, is simply all the accredited law schools in the country. You say, well, like, what is the Law School Admissions Council? Well, they, they're like a clearinghouse. They, the individual accredited law schools wholly own the Law School Admissions Council. Right? So it's not like some third party. It's law schools. So if you were in charge of the LSAC, you're there to promote the law school's interest, right? The way I'm here to promote your interest. Right. Well, after your first year of law school, wouldn't you as a law school send the, under, the, the, the GPA and the class rank down to the Law School Admissions Council? You with me? Say you have like 192 accredited law schools, something like that, right? Well, do you get after the first year, they all send down to the LSAC your class rank and your first year law school GPA, yes? Well, if you were at the LSAC, wouldn't you compare all this data? Wouldn't you take the GPA and compare it with the, the law school GPA, yes? Wouldn't you take the LSAT score and compare it with the law school GPA? Yes? 
And then wouldn't you take both and compare it with the first year law school GPA? Yes, talk to me. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. And wouldn't you want to know the outcomes? Well, that's why I'm here. I don't know anything else. Well, I don't know anything. But I'm prepared. Which is what you need today. I'm prepared. I can be, you know, but, well, here's the deal. Correlation goes from zero to one. So the closer you are to zero, the less predictive something is, right? The closer you get to one, the more predictive something is, right? Now, I don't do statistics, but I can understand that. Okay. Well, the GPA has a predictive validity which is seven. So it definitely has predictive validity. Hmm? Some. Oh, yeah, some. Some. And, 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 it's established, right? Well, your GPA, I'm sorry, your LSAT score also has predictive validity. What would you rely on more? Okay. The LSAT, but that's what it is. Now think, then just stop, step back, because if you get this test, you're at such an advantage, because nobody gets it. Nobody's paying any attention to this test. The, 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 it's vaudeville out there. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's nothing on this test called logic games. We'll get into that now. Uh, this is not something about tricks and shortcuts and finding a way around the test. It's absolutely pointless. That's empirical. You with me? This is here. I'm not making it up. The information is available on the LSAC website. What would your common sense tell you with respect to where it makes sense to prepare? In other words, if you're if you were conflicted, I'm, and in no way am I saying you would ignore anything, but if your choice was to work on your GPA or work on your LSAT score, and it were binary, say you had to choose one over the other, which one would you be working on? LSAT score. Because you want to be lawyers, right? So you would you would never make that decision if you wanted to be an engineer, because you're not taking the LSAT, right? Or if you want to be a journalist, well, you're not taking the LSAT. You're going to be a journalist, but you want to be lawyers. Oh, go figure. So, and when you put them, when you put the two together, that goes up to, I think, 0.52. Okay. So do you get what I'm saying is that this <coughs> is this. Because that's what's going to happen in law school. That's how you're going to have to reason, which is this. And that's it. But what does that got to do with content? Nothing. What does that got to do with any course you take in college? Nothing but very, very little. Um, and, and, and somewhere in that in White's book, he goes out of his way to say that the LSAT, whether, whether it's intentionally or not, it's absolutely misrepresented. It's being presented to people as something it's not, and you're wasting your time. And that is almost certainly a reference to formal logic. There is no formal logic in this test. Uh, you don't need a dork, although you're going to get one with Jim. But he's a dork who communicates really, really well, <laughs> right? He's a really remarkable character. But you don't need a dork. To you don't need to be a dork, nor do you need a dork up here to understand this. Nor does a dork necessarily understand how to explain to you how to do something well. Um, so it's a valid test. That's why they're doing it. So again, in that, in that, what you're trying to accomplish here, right, is you get you're going to be able to whack a mole when you recognize it, and you have to practice. You know, you're not going to whack a mole. You may, you may, your personality may really resist this. Your personality may be really, really grounded in I have to double check everything. If you have to double check everything, what will you run out of? And you get if you if you double check everything, you're fighting the psychology of the test because I'm purposely not giving you enough what. Yeah, for the person who's going to double check everything. Mm -hmm. I'm purposely not giving you enough time if you're going to use the process of elimination. That may work well in college, but I'm sorry, I thought you wanted to be a lawyer. I, I, I imagine I got a client in my room and I've got five choices. Say, well, you know, let's figure this out together. Uh, yeah, I don't think you should do A, and uh, well, I don't think you should be. I can't eliminate C. You will keep that alive, and I don't think. I mean, <laughs> that's not how it works. It's just not, 
right? So, so it's okay. If I understand the issue, the rule, if I perform the analysis and I have something formed, and again, we'll start doing this next week, you're gonna see what your mind forms will direct you to the credited answer because that's what, that's what the writer did. When the writer created this, that's what they're doing. So you're just following the writer's path because the writer's mission is to see, do you reason the way we're taught to reason? Well, that's what they have to test for. So it's right there, which makes this consistent, the situational thing. It's not, it's, it's made up. I'm just gonna give you a bunch of situations, right, that test whether you understand what a flaw is, to test whether you understand what an assumption is, to test whether or not, and you think about what's going on in, in, uh, in uh, logical reasoning, right? The, the logical reasoning is there to measure whether or not you have lawyering skills. Would that make sense? Would lawyering skills come in handy? So, in logical reasoning, all they do here is say, I'm going to, the issues that you're going to have to resolve. You're going to have to identify assumptions, laws, draw conclusions. You're going to have to weaken arguments, and you're going to have to strengthen arguments. After all principles, there are other issues. And of your 50 logical reasoning questions, if you're, and again, all I'm doing is basing on, I, I've seen every test today, this is what I do, right? That doesn't help you if I can't explain it. Doesn't help you at all if I can't explain it. Lawyers explain for a living. You with me? You will not be a lawyer if you cannot explain things well, I promise you. So explaining requires you to first understand, right? So I can't explain a whole lot about Aristotle. <clears throat> Like I can explain a little bit about function argument, right? But when, I, when he starts writing about bugs and stuff, I have no clue what he's, I, I can't explain what I can't understand. You with me? I, I can understand this. That's different, separate from whether I can explain it. But here's what you're doing. So of 50 questions, 35 of them are right there. 35, maybe 40. How do you memorize how to strengthen and weaken an argument? You can't. But do you agree that as a lawyer, you're going to have to strengthen and weaken arguments? And doesn't that require you to understand this stuff? How do you strengthen and weaken when you don't understand what the issue is? Or when you don't understand what the law is? Or when, when you're too, uh, you don't want to perform analysis because you don't like the outcome. I don't want to perform analysis because the decision might support the Trump administration policy. And I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to read the law. Screw the law. I'm not going to do it. Do you get that's not the path to follow if you want to be a lawyer? Talk to me. Yeah. Because, you know, where we're comfortable, we do no questioning, right? So if you're, if you're comfortable with the view, you have no reason to question. You're comfortable, right? It's your cocoon. Okay. But in my world, to somebody who's comfortable in a very different cocoon, who's going to show up and start doing this stuff. So all they're doing here is, to, so if I, I took you right along here, right? I want to, I want you to strengthen an argument. Do you? You don't happen to think you know what a fact is, do you? Do you guys know what a fact, have, have you used the word fact a few times in life? Yes, sir. Have you used it a few thousand times in life? Yes. Talk to me. Yes? Yeah, Probably, yeah. Probably. Probably. <laughs> you don't think you've used the word fact more than a thousand times? Yeah. All, right, all right, a few hundred. A few hundred. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm a lawyer, right? Maybe it may be. Yes. Um, 
And would it be fair to say you don't continuously use a word that you don't understand the definition of? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. But now you're questioning everything. You with me? You've got to leave your political baggage home. You've got to leave your advocacy home. You have to learn how to advocate before you have advocacy. So, uh, what if the definition you have for the word fact, or the definition you have for the word inference, or the definition you have for the word conclusion, what if that definition is not the same definition of the person who's writing what you're reading? Is there somebody who is writing what you're reading? Talk to me. Yes. Come on, we're in the locker room. You're learning, to me, you're preparing to prepare. You with? The, the, the way this thing will unfold is there were three phases. Phase one, which will go for about six weeks, is you've got to prepare. Turn the clock off, throw the clock out the window. You've got to change the way you read, you've got to change the way you write, you've got to reflect, you've got to deliberate. I love it. Phase two is you have to prepare to execute. So preparing to execute is We'll come in, and we say we prepared on flaw issues, we prepared on assumption issues, and prepare means to <coughs> brief. You're going to brief, just like lawyers brief. You're going to break arguments down. You're going to understand them in a very granular way, and it's going to take forever. Get over it. Okay? You're going to own it. You with me? When you own it, then you can explain it to somebody else. And then you'll know you own it. But at some point, you got to move from preparation to execution. Right? And so that middle phase will be, OK, well, let's do this. You tell me you've been working on flaws. You tell me you've been working on assumptions, right? So shouldn't you now be able to show me after some, after some period of time? Yeah? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so we're going to come here in the middle of you know, when we get to, say, week five, week six, right? And Jim's going to come in and say, well, let's have a 35-minute exercise on flaw issues. And that's all you'll be doing, 35 minutes on flaw issues. Wouldn't that be now you're preparing to execute? Yeah. And wouldn't that give you feedback as to what, if any, progress you've made on flaw issues? And wouldn't that feedback inform you on how to alter your preparation if you need to alter your preparation? Talk yes. to me. Yes. It's trial practice. It's simply trial practice. I, I, you know, it's as, as natural to me as hair used to be. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's trial practice. Okay. So then if you realize you're terrible at flaws, you just skip those questions? Well, then you work a plan. It's hard to be terrible at flaws because they're so heavily tested, right? Uh, but yes, yeah, but, but, but you then say, if I've exhausted my abilities, that's one thing, right? But it may be you haven't reached your abilities. But yeah, eventually, from all this, this briefing, you'll be able to come down here and say you have certain strength and weaknesses yourself, and that informs how you attack the task. That informs the plan you take. It's also bloody clinical. I, 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 yeah. um, but then, you execute. Right? So the third phase of this will be, say, in the final three classes, right? Like what they did at Pace. Jim, Jim texted me. But that's what they were doing today. They're in their next to last class. They're taking a full exam. Do you get that's the execution phase? Now I want you to think about this. Think about the psychometric, think about the, the characteristics. Have you met people who you wouldn't trust with preparation? Mm -hmm. Have you met people you wouldn't say, well, you, I want you to really, I want you to own this. Have you met people you wouldn't say that to? Talk to me. Yes. yes. Yeah, you bet. And, and that doesn't mean they couldn't own it. Right? It doesn't necessarily mean they couldn't own it. You just don't trust that they will own it. Get talk to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you met people who you wouldn't trust to execute? Have you met people who you put them under the gun and you say, perform? Mm -hmm. Have you met people you would not be comfortable with in the actual process of execution? Talk to me. Yes. yes. Right? So meaning that could be a person who's a bookworm. And you would trust the bookworm to be fully prepared, yes? Because it's a bookworm. Sure. 
But what if you took the bookworm and said, now, I want you to stand up in front of a jury and say, people are ready. Would you agree with me, though, the two very different skills? Yes, absolutely. That? Yeah, but that's what this is. I mean, I love this test. Nobody gets it, right? Because it's been my life. My life. I'm not saying I'm real good at it, right? But you get, psychologically, you have to have the ability to prepare. Yes? You also psychologically have to have the ability to execute. And those are two radically different states. If you think about it, it's like, it's like you're bipolar. Say, like, how do you do both of those things? Well, you're going to have to do both of those things to be successful. And, and so that's the way we're moving, right? We're moving from, I, if, I want you to do nothing under time conditions right now. You've got to learn how to learn. And if you don't think you're going to learn how to learn in here, then it's the wrong place and that's so fine. But if you are going to learn how to learn, you need to be respectful that what you're learning is really very substantial. And it really is. And you can use it the rest of your life and everything's good. So it's not just work. Um, <clears throat> so that's how we will unfold. Preparation, prepare to execute, execute, show me evidence that you're ready and you're ready. Show me evidence that you're not ready and what am I going to say to you? Right here, right, right. You're, 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 you're going to claim whatever you, oh, I'm really good at flaws. Okay. Show me. Show me. Well, I have the characterization. Show me. I'm an evidence person. And then you, you get then you go through this process, which I think it's fair to describe as rigorous. But you get, you go through this process. How does that not lessen anxiety? Because think about the other thing in the test that's messing people up. Would it be fair to say anxiety can be an issue on this test? Yeah. yeah. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but if a person didn't feel anxious or if a person didn't feel fear, would it be fair to say that person has a serious psychological disorder? Yeah. Who is it that doesn't fear? I mean, like, hello? <clears throat> My first trial, first felony trial. I think it was 1981. On the way to the courthouse, I'm crying in the car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm the son of Dominic and Josephine. You with me? And again, you get a similar sort of background from Jim. Jim's from Brooklyn, I'm from the Bronx, right? But I, 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 there wasn't a book in the house. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Why in God's name were they giving me this case to do? <laughs> you with me? I didn't believe in myself. Uh, I didn't have the self esteem. And, but what was I, and what did I know I was? Prepared. Well, prepared. That I knew. That I knew. But what I'm saying to you is, we're all the same. We're not that we're all the same at all these ways. But you get, if you don't feel, if you don't experience fear, you're just real screwed up. So it's not, not that you feel it, it's what you do with it, right? Okay. Preparation is the antidote to anxiety. That is the absolute message. And that is a message that, again, that if I, if I brought Vicky in here, my wife, Vicky would tell you that that has guided her because she's constantly insecure, notwithstanding she has a very responsible position. She's still Vicky, right? So you're still whoever you are as you sit there. I'm not going to change, change that, nor do I wish to change that. You've got to take that person and you've got to say, okay, but if I am uh, sensitive to anxiety, how do I deal with it? Preparation. And when you prepare this way, how in God's name do you not have higher self-esteem? You know, how do you not go in there more confident of you of, of yourself? And that's really just so much of this is what's going on up here and in here. So so again, just here, psychometric testing. In the verbal section of the psychometric test, which is the logical reasoning section there is a strong correlation between the number assigned to a question and the difficulty posed by the question. Now, that is not true in reading comprehension. It is not true in analytical reasoning, which you will never, ever call logic games again. <laughs> I, well, I'll get into that momentarily. Um, you want to be lawyers, yes? Yes. And do we agree that for lawyers, words matter? Absolutely. Yes. Well, then words matter.
And some words matter more than others. Material words matter more than immaterial words. I get. But, <clears throat> but how about in your plan that you're developing? If you have reason, and you have to cooperate this, you can't just rely on me, right? But if I were to say to you, which I'm very comfortable saying to you, that in the test you take, in logical reasoning, questions that are assigned numbers 1 through 12, of which there'll be 24 questions, right? Because you have two sections, yes? A minimum of 70% of those 24 questions will be at level 1 or 2. Now, doesn't that also mean that a maximum of 30% will be at level 3, 4, or 5? Talk to me. Yes. Right. And that's this thing about, okay, what I said implies something else, right? Every action has a reaction, right? So you said, well, I'm not, so, so you say, okay, we're talking about correlation, we're not talking about causation. But if you, if you establish that through your own experience, not through my characterizations, right? If you, through your own experience, you say as you're preparing, son of a bitch. You know, when I get flaw issues, and they've been assigned numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I get a higher percentage of them, <coughs> forget about the clock, right? But as I'm briefing, I get a higher percent of them right, and a higher, greater percent of them seem more natural to me. Wouldn't that be some evidence that your experience is consistent with the psychometric testing? And we take a choice. How about you do flaw issues that have been assigned numbers, say, 17 through 25. And your experience tells you, I keep getting my ass kicked. Even when I don't put the clock on, right? Even when I don't put the clock, son of a bitch, I'm looking at the right answer. And I don't have a clue how they got there. It's a beautiful test. Because that's for the geek. That's for the person going to Yale. Was, you know, oh, OK, so you're a dog. Well, you're not a dog. She's a geek. She's a geek. Right? Um, so, here, the word fact, which you don't just define the word fact this way. In law, law is not interdisciplinary, meaning we don't use Webster's Dictionary. So when you're in here with Keith, and you're studying environmental law, don't you think environmental law comes from federal regs? Talk to me. Oh, okay. Well, don't you think those federal regs are going to have definitions? Mm -hmm. Who created, did Webster create those definitions? No. Son of a bitch. Who created those definitions? Lawyers and yeah. they didn't know what the definition actually means, and then they yeah. come down to what you make it up. Consensus. Well, but you agree, but yeah, you get the definition is created by the writer of the text. But then you put your environmental law down. So let me give you an example. Uh, the New York State Penal Law is the law I've been most familiar with. And we have a definition section. And in the definition section is the word fraud. Okay. And fraud is a specific intent crime. Meaning fraud has to be proven as you intended to engage in fraud. If you don't establish intent, you don't have fraud. That's what the New York State Penal Law says. But if we had Vicki in here, Vicki works with the federal Medicare reg. She works in government contracting. She works uh, in pharmaceuticals. Well, there are federal regs that govern the field she's in. Well, they have a definition for the word fraud. And what do you think fraud doesn't require in her world? Intent. Intent. If you're working in a medical office and you put the wrong code in on something, so instead of putting, you know, uh, 1101, you put 1011. Right. But the office receives a greater reimbursement from the government because that code triggers a more expensive product. Yeah, you're guilty. It has, it's not relevant. You did not intend it. So what I'm getting to is to get that the reality of law is each area of law has its own definitions. Okay. So would it surprise you that the LSAT had its own definitions? No. That's what they're doing. And so if you don't take the time to learn then, you're, you're right here. And you're competing with tons of people who are right here. 
but that they don't get that the definitions that they brought in may be accurate. So the word fact. Would anybody in this room define the word fact as a matter for which no support is offered? No. No. And how do you think the uh, folks at the LSAC define the word fact? A matter of which no support is offered. You with me? How cool is that? It's really cool. It's, you know, because then they, they're able to create the environment I'm familiar with. So when you read here, say you're reading a logical reasoning argument and the first sentence is, every planet you'll never see is purple. What is now a fact? Every planet you'll never see is purple. That's correct. Good night, lights out. <laughs> and, and that reflects how law proceeds. Matters that are considered factual are stipulated to by both parties. They're not in dispute. Parties are not in dispute. They, whether they're correct or not is irrelevant. They're not matters in dispute. So if, if counsel and I want to agree there was no Wednesday last week, we can, well, no, but we, we go up to the judge and we say, judge, we want to stipulate there was no Wednesday last week. The judge is going to say, well, I don't know if I want to do that because the jury is going to be confused. But, but sure. But sure, you're not. You're both agreeing on it, right? We're both agreeing there was no Wednesday last week. <laughs> okay, cool. Then the judge can instruct the jurors there was no Wednesday last week. <laughs> Do you get this mimics that? It's really cool, and, and nobody knows this stuff. It's just really <laughs> cool. So, oh, okay. So now I know. Every time I I get to a period, whatever was to the left of that period falls into this category. It's an established fact. I don't get to argue with it, right? And if I want you to strengthen an argument, I have all these places I can go. So at any of these issues, I have all these places I can go. So if I want you to strengthen an argument, and I give you Three facts and one conclusion. Yes? Could one of the facts actually be harmful to the conclusion? If, I, if my conclusion is the car is green, but the first fact I give you is Scott testified the car is red. Stop. This is what they're doing. Would it be fair to say the role in the argument of the first, and it doesn't matter whether you say premise, evidence, sentence, none of that matters. But if, if the first sentence said, Scott testified car is red, but the argument's conclusion is the car is green, what is the role in the argument of the first sentence? What is the, and you get one of the issues you're gonna have is what is the role in the argument? And it is the, probably the most important issue on the test, although it as an issue is not gonna be tested. It's gonna be there about three times. What is the role in the argument of that? If my conclusion, well, let's go through this together. If my conclusion is the car is, did I say what? Did I say right? Green. 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 So if the conclusion is the car is green, but the first witness says the car is red, would it be fair to say that the first witness is contradicting my conclusion? Yes. Talk to me. Fact no. Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's an established fact. It's an established fact that that person said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, right? It doesn't mean the car is green. Correct. It said the car. But is it further fair to say that the role in the argument, if you're describing the role in the argument of that first sentence, is that it's a premise that is designed to undermine the argument's conclusion, yes. to challenge the argument's conclusion, to diminish the argument's conclusion? Yeah? Anybody need Aristotle yet? There is nothing more important on this test than understanding the role in the argument of these, of these individual sentences. There's nothing. If the second sentence is, but Scott is colorblind, what is the role in the argument of the second sentence? And you could phrase it in a number of different ways. One way you could say one role in the argument is to challenge the first sentence, right? And the second, right, right. The second might be it's laying a predicate or a foundation in support of the argument's ultimate conclusion. Do you see it? That's what you're being tested on. It's that bloody simple. 
So if I want to strengthen an argument, the most direct way to do it is to identify a fact that is supportive of the conclusion and then add additional uh, weight, concrete, if you will. Make that fact more compelling. But if I want to strengthen an argument, and I can go back to Vicki in this phone. So I want to strengthen the argument, right? And the fact is we have Vicki's name, and the fact is we have Vicki's number, right? And I want to support my conclusion that, in fact, it's Vicki. Yes? So wouldn't, I, wouldn't we support that if then we went here and said the voice that Peter heard was Vicky's voice? Yes. Talk to me. Yes. But you see, they went to this column now. In other words, I strengthened the argument not by going to an explicit fact, but from an inference that flowed from an explicit fact. You guys see it? Talk to me. It's all right here. If I want to go here, if I want to strengthen the argument, And I give you those same facts on Vicky. Would it be fair to say you don't know anything about Colleen? You've read this, fair to say there's no reference to Colleen, yes? Mm -hmm. Nor would you be able to infer anything about Colleen because you have no knowledge of Colleen, yes? Right. So would I strengthen the argument by having an answer choice that says Colleen, who is a daughter and lives with Peter and Vicky, is not using that phone at this time. Does that strengthen the argument that it's Vicky? No. Yes. Yes. Uh, it still does. Well, yeah, it does. Well, no, wait a minute. Remember, we want to strengthen, do we strengthen the conclusion that it's Vicky by, by eliminating the possibility that it's someone else who has access to it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. That's it. So we're going to get into this issue by issue, but it's all bloody right here. So whether I'm talking about assumptions, if, if we want to test on assumptions, the, the, anybody an English major? I'm sorry. <laughs> we realize, would it be fair to say as an English major, you're encouraged to keep the reader engaged? When you're right, that one of the goals Absolutely. is to keep the reader engaged. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And no lawyer on the planet would ever do that. We could care less about it. Preferably, we want the reader just to fall asleep. <laughs> well, it's really, it's just an interest. It be, because you get, you want to be a lawyer, right? So don't you create ambiguity when you seek engagement? If you start the first sentence with Peter, the proper noun Peter, would it be fair to say you may, if you're referring to Peter in the second sentence, would it be fair to say you might not, might, you might not want to repeat the word Peter again? Is that fair? Every lawyer on the planet will repeat the word Peter without exception. And the reason is, if the one sentence says, I don't know, Peter went out for lunch, he ate raw fish. Who ate raw fish? Right, right. So Peter is now sick. And they want an assumption. Haven't we assumed that the pronoun he refers to the proper noun Peter? Yes. We don't like assumptions. <laughs> we don't like assumptions. It's really interesting. It's, I promise you, you know, again, this got to work for you, right? But I absolutely promise you. Your attention to detail, your attention, to, it, it's not a heavy, I don't think it's a heavy lift, right? It's just changing the manner in which you process information. And you have to do this to be a lawyer because we're constantly looking. If the other party is seeking to mislead me, and, and that's what's happening here, is the other party is seeking me, wants me to infer something they don't imply. I mean, think about regular life. I know but some of you guys are too young. It's regular life. Have you, is it just me or have you ever lied? Yeah. Well, think about the process. Or have you ever, like, you, we didn't actually lie, you kind of told half the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? So you gave some of the evidence, but you didn't give all the evidence, right? It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, 
this process in my business right, is my adversary is not going to be complete and accurate. If my adversary is complete and accurate, my adversary is committing malpractice. You with me? This is not in a billion years personal. Right? So what I'm reading, I know what I'm reading is not complete and accurate because I know somebody wants to help me. It may be accurate, but it's not going to be complete. It may not even be accurate, but it's certainly not going to be both. So it's misleading. Have you ever misled someone? Have you ever done that, or is it just me? But I want you, if you just think about what you did, it's right here, and you can't, as a lawyer, you're doing it consciously. So, again, in a million years, I mean, I, 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 Bill Clinton is an entertaining guy. I, I certainly mean him no ill will, but for those of you old enough to remember when Bill Clinton got on TV, and he wagged his finger, we went like this, and I just knew he was telling the truth because he, you don't lie when you're wagging your finger, right? You're a big you're wagging your finger, right? Right? And he said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Ms. Lewinsky. Would it be fair to say that he wanted you to infer that there was no sex? Yeah. But you implied, in other words, he implied there was no sex. You inferred there was no sex. But he allowed your inference. No, it all depends what the word sex means. Actually, in that case, it all depends on what the term sexual relations. He's given a definition of the term sexual relations. The term sexual relations back in the day did not include, let me see, not the penis. That wasn't included in the term. So he was being accurate. Do you get it is human nature to mislead, talk to me. I'm not, ex I'm not endorsing it, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just thinking, as understand, do you get his goal was to get you to infer something he could deny he applied? Because he was given a value, he was given definition, he was just comporting with the definition. Um, so this process is all here. Um, now let me, let me touch on that. Where are we here? Okay. Analytical reasoning. Now, now when you use, and I know you won't, but when you use, when you say logic games, I'm going to send you home and make you write on a blackboard <laughs> you know, a thousand times. That ain't his name. Then why should we care? All right. Well, let's go to the evidence. Do we agree? Have we established that the test is predictive? Yes. To your satisfaction. Talk to me. Yeah. Now I need you to infer, right? Because we're saying that's a fact we've established, right? So would you infer, as I would, from the fact that the test is valid, that you wouldn't take one section of the test and have it to really have almost nothing to do with law school? Doesn't it follow that if the total test is valid, each of its component parts must be intended to be valid. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. I mean, it's got to add to the correlation. If, if the test were more valid without analytical reason, if it was more predictive without analytical reasoning in it, wouldn't you expect to see analytical drop from it? Yes. Right, because the purpose of the test is to be predictive. Now, would you agree with me that lawyers, again, I agree with Lady's Foundation, Lawyers care about language. Yes. Okay. And you want to be a what? Lawyer. So I would be concerned about you if you didn't care about language. Is that, that fair for me to feel that concern? Mm -hmm. Now, would you further agree with me that some language uh, is more is broader in scope and more uh, important than other language? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's use an example. If we have a book and the book has. Uh, nine chapters, and each of the nine chapters is named, right? Would you agree with me that the name given to the chapter is, should be giving me information about what's in the chapter? Talk to me. Yes. And that the name given to a chapter would represent a material term. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? So I'm not talking about the 19th word on the third page in the chapter, right, which may be epistemological. I don't care. 
Would you agree with me, the material term is the name of the chapter? Yeah, talk to me? Yes. yes. Okay. So if a chapter were named Immanuel Kant, would you expect within that chapter to be reading about, well, you tell me, who, whose philosophy would you expect to be reading about in that chapter? Emmanuel. Emmanuel Kant. And I don't know if anybody here has tried to read Kant. I have. I've concluded that Kant doesn't understand Kant. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you gotta be kidding me. But if, if you saw that, wouldn't it alert you to a probability that the content in there is gonna be pretty challenging? Like, if, if, if chapter four was Immanuel Kant, yes? And chapter <coughs> five was uh, Derek Jeter. Would you expect one to be a more natural read than the other? Yes. Yes, talk to me. And would it give you as the reader a heads up to what you're getting into? Yeah? Yes. yes. Well, what happens if I name the Immanuel Kant chapter Derek Jeter? You have no reference. Well, I would have a reference. You have no warning. I, I, well, I, well, yeah, I mean, I'd have no warning. I mean, my reference is I'm going to read about Derek Jeter. Right, but that's right, I have no warning. So would it be fair to say if I named it Derek Jeter, the expectation of the reader would be likely that the reader's going to expect it was more approachable than it was ever designed to be? Talk to me. Yes. Okay. So do you agree with the principle that as a lawyer, material terms should be respected? Yes. Is that everybody okay with that? But now you're lawyers, right? So now you're stuck. Because now you're agreeing to a principle, right? Oh, that's that blue guy up there. Yeah, now you're, yeah, now you're screwed. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm, I here. this is prep test 78. I'm looking here at the prep test uh, section title. This is by the Law School Admissions Council, the folks who create the test, yes? So would you agree the title that they give this should be the title that I am guided by? Yes? yes? So why is there, there's logical reasoning, section one, analytical reasoning, section two, logical reasoning is section three, reading comprehension is section four. I'm sorry, there's no section in here that's called logic games. <laughs> Do we agree that the section title is a material term? Yes. Do we agree that there is no section title referred to as logic games? Yes. Following our, our, the argument we've just completed, wouldn't that then give the reader a misunderstanding of what's about to happen? Talk to me. Yeah. So where's Aristotle? <clears throat> so like, you would do that for what reason? How about, so you would do what, to dumb it down? I mean, I don't I have to infer, I don't know. Like, I, I would infer, see, from this information, Peter would infer, you're consciously, you're not mistakenly doing this, right? Talk to me, is this a mistake? Or does the person who calls it logic game understand that not what it is? Help me out here. I'm just a kid from the Bronx. It's egregious. And, and it, it misses the whole point of you guys want to be a lawyer and you go in there and you're already off, off on the long, wrong foot. Right? So I don't know why, and, but please feel free to inquire. And I can tell you the answer you can so you go to that Kaplan person or whatever that, that commercial prep course is, and uh, you'll say, so it's called analytical reasoning. Can you tell me, like, why do you call it logic games? I guarantee you the answer you're going to get, that doesn't matter. To which you're going to say, is it a material term? And I, I'm trying to be a lawyer, so it may not matter to you because maybe you're not a lawyer. Maybe you don't plan to be a lawyer, or maybe you plan to be disbarred if you become a lawyer. <laughs> Matched me. <clears throat> so here's the deal. It's right here. W would it be fair to say this appears a long way removed from formal logic? It's not formal logic. That doesn't mean there aren't intersections. Sure, there are intersections of economics. Or, I mean, but analytical reasoning is testing your ability to organize, manage, and solve. Now talk to me. If it's doing that, does that sound like something that would be helpful in law school? 
Yeah. Talk to me? Yes. So let's, let's take two competing views of this. One view is my view, that that section is there to test your ability to organize, manage, and sell. Does everybody agree that is, has direct connection to law school yes. and beyond? Yes. yes. Okay. The alternative view is, it's what, formal logic? I don't know what you're told. What, what is logic games testing? Whether well, you're good at puzzles? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean I, honestly, is it, is it being sold to you as you're good with puzzles? Is it being sold to you as it's formal logic? How much formal logic do you think there is in law school? Zero. How many puzzles do you plan to work on at law school that are required? <laughs> So could it be that it's being misrepresented and could it be that it's being dumbed down? Exactly, how does that help you? I know, I know, I know. You feel enfranchised, you're empowered because now somebody said to you, but it's really stupid and you say, yes, I can really do stupid stuff. I'm so good at stupid stuff. But the stuff's not stupid, so you are stupid. <laughs> It's really an interesting how this has ever happened. I don't have a clue how it's ever gone unchallenged. I don't have a clue. It's really important for a general principle. It doesn't really matter what you call it. You know, if, if you know, as long as you approach it right. Just a side question: When you studied for the LSAT, did they call it logic games, or was there a point that you saw it change names? It has never, ever, 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 ever had any title except analytical reasoning ever so somebody made this up yeah. and so I, I'm guessing I'm guessing I don't mean to be disrespectful I'm guessing it was Stanley Kaplan I don't know that <laughs> right but I'm guessing somewhere between his third and his fourth glass of wine in 1947 he said well I like all logic games can't understand that I don't have a clue right so I'm now I'm just having fun but there is no history of this in the actual exam um, so how do you feel about those books, like the, those um, LSAT like Bible series? Like, you have a match? Like they, <laughs> <laughs> you have a match. Don't they, have, don't they use like real past questions or do they make up questions? No, well it depends on the text. I think it's fair to say most of the texts rely on the actual LSATs. What does that got to do with the manner in which they suggest you solve? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, and I'm thinking, again, Oh, if I could find it. It's in here. It's somewhere. I'll get it for you next week, right? It's in here where Tom White is saying people are approaching the LSAT trying to make it something it's not. It's not logic games. It's this. And if you approach it as this, you're going to go to law school unless God has other plans. And if you approach it as those logic games and you go to law school, then you would just intuitively get it. That's fine, but you didn't learn it. It has nothing to do with law school, and that cannot be. Am I missing something, or doesn't this section have to have something to do with law school? So, what they do is right here. So if I say to you, yeah, hey, well, just, just, just put this, I mean, we'll spend tons of time on this, but understand, Again, have you met people who don't organize well and people who do organize well? And we're just regular life, right? Have you met people who manage well and people who don't manage well? Yes? Yes. Don't you think a successful law school student is going to do both? Organize and manage. And isn't the purpose of that to solve? That's, it's a really cool section when you understand what to do. And it's application to law school Logic games, I, I want to know what law school classes uh, you benefit from, from being good at whatever logic games it is. Since it's not on the test, I don't know even why you're doing it. Uh, but, okay. Um, but I assure you, if you ask Keith, Keith, what classes do I benefit from when I learn how to organize, manage, and sob deductively? Meaning you have to come to a must be. And he will not stop. But Sid Pro, torts, conflicts, products liability, 
I, I could keep going. Those are all classes in which you do a lot of drawing, right? I mean, think of a torts class, um, and think of whatever it is you know about analytical reasoning. If you're in a torts, I mean, in my world, I mean, I've tried an awful lot of cases, right? With an awful lot of possibilities, often several defendants that can be tried in multiple jurisdictions under certain constraints. I, I can't, I can't, uh, I have interlocking defenses, so, so, you know, defendant P and defendant R cannot be tried together because they're interlocking defenses. Uh, I have a conflict with the court, has conflict in its schedule, so we don't have available a Tuesday or a Thursday. It's just down the earth, real life stuff. If you cannot schedule the case, you cannot try a case. Uh, you're in torts, and, and somebody's talking about uh, you have a, a case where uh, uh, your, your, your client uh, took a, a, a medication and almost immediately after taking the medication went into toxic shock and now was in a coma. Wouldn't you look into the medication? Yes. Okay. And in order to see now, but now you're here, right? Now you're here, right? This is not now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm in, in, I'm indignant. How dare you? I don't care if you're indignant or not. It's what will the facts show? <clears throat> so if I'm looking at that medication, might that medication be a compound? Might the compound then be composed of several elements? Mm -hmm. Might the elements then be natural or, uh, or uh, artificial? Yeah. Uh, might those natural elements have been grown in different states? Yeah. Might those artificial elements have been synthesized in different locations? Yeah. Might, after they've been grown or synthesized, they've been transported by different companies? Sure. Uh, might there be refrigeration required for some of these and not refrigeration for others? Do you see how many boxes you're drawing? <laughs> Welcome to law school. That's that's not a little reason. That's not, I, 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 it is so clear to me, it's so beyond clear to me, right? That if you are not organized when you do that, and if you then do not manage well, you will not do well in law school. And I, as an attorney, there's no section by far for me that's closer to solving. Again, in my world, I've worked on on solved homicides, right? There is nothing remotely as close to that as analytical reasoning. So maybe you know my indignation is based on you know you're really dumb. You're trying to dumb down something that's really actually precious because I have used that to try to do some really meaningful stuff and it ain't getting it. So look at what they do. So I'll just take an example out of here and then we'll be good. Look all over this. Thing. So, what they're, what they're doing here is, uh, let's talk. you start out with, what they're giving you is a statute. Has anybody referred to logic games as a statute? No. What do you think would have more applicability to law school? A statute or logic games? Statute. <laughs> so what they're doing here, is they give you a statute. And it's always in the same place and it's always developed the same way. So I'm just reading this one. And here, let me erase some of this. This is so exciting. Now, what am I supposed to say? You're still here. Oh, yeah. Some of the bitch. Just here. opportunity to really get this right and to actually be prepared for law school when you arrive. So here I'm just looking at, this says to me, uh, there are four students who will be assigned to a history project in which they will search archives from the year 1921, 22, 23, 24. Let me see. So I want to organize I want to manage. I don't want to stop. 